the Joe Rogan experience. You guys have put together is pretty remarkable. Cause Thank you. The food there is so good. It's kind, of, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, your pasta's got voodoo in it. I don't know what you're doing. It is and voodoo. And I, I guess it's because it's handmade, right? Because uh, one the first time my wife and I ate there, we sat right next to that open area where you can watch yeah. you guys make the, the pasta. And it's uh, such a painstaking process. And you, you realize you really, truly appreciate that it's an art form. You know, that like making stuff like that, like cutting no corners and making it as good as it could possibly taste. Well, that, I mean, that's the ultimate goal is to create that connection between pasta maker and someone who's eating the pasta. Like if you look through the glass and you see a pastayo or pastaya in there, what, what's the out. difference of pastayo? And pastayo is, is male. Gender pastayo neutral? Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they're banging out trofie, which is like a coil from Luguria. And you look down at your plate and there's like 160 to 180 pieces in your plate. You're like, fuck. This, this guy's is this repping. Your, there is, yeah. He's got pictures of This it. guy's doing 180 reps just for me. Mm. That's a connection. And once you get it, sometimes a bowl of pasta is a bowl of pasta. I get it. But this is something different. It, this is this is craft. This is tradition. This is continuing this conversation of that's been passed down from generation to generation. Uh, and all I'm doing, all we're doing at, at Felix is just a small spoke in a in a, in a massive wheel of, of Italian culinary tradition. Well, you know just exactly how long to cook it too, which is amazing. Like the the because I'm the fucking bite. maniacal. Joe. I get it, man. You must be. <laughs> Because the just the way your teeth sink into it, it's like everything is amazing. I like to call it toothsome. Mm. Al dente. That's what al dente means, yeah. to the tooth. Is that what it means? Al oh, dente. dente. Dental. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Toothsome. 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 Ha, so that's part of the experience, right, is the right amount of chew. Just right that, amount of chew. Oh, and each so pasta's, satisfying. <laughs> each pasta's cooked region specific because they cook pasta very different. In Naples versus Rome versus Bologna what is versus the difference? Sardinia. It's just preference. It's mm -hmm. based on tradition. And the thing is this. Authenticity is very personal, right? Your mom makes macaroni and cheese with Velveeta. My mom makes macaroni and cheese with Tillamook cheddar. That shit's authentic to me. It may not be authentic to you. Italy's no different. But the differences and the diversity are so specific, not only per region, but town and then house to house. And it's, it's been that way for thousands of years. That's why I think Italian food next to Chinese food is the most diverse there is. Mm. And you could literally study your whole life and not even scratch the surface. Yeah, not, not, every, not every chef operates from being an artist, and there's different levels of food. Um, I do have to say, you know, Evan is an absolute master. You know, he's, Evan's obviously not Italian, um, but has studied all over Italy, and it's the, really the dying art of handmade pasta. And Evan is a custodian of keeping this art alive. Like, uh, he's a maestro. He's unbelievable. Is there a specific type of flour that you use? Uh, we import six different types from four different regions. And now, is the, the, the word about pasta and about bread and wheat in general, is that American wheat is a different kind of wheat? It's, it's a different kind of wheat. It's also processed completely different. I don't, I don't use a lot of American wheat just because it's, it's just been manipulated so much. And a lot of the, the digestibility of, uh, in my opinion, people are going to, freak out. But in my opinion, the amount of work that goes into denaturing pasta in order to get it flat via machine has a lot to do with its digestibility. Mm. Just like sourdough bread is more digestible because it's broken down in a different way. So handmade pasta is less manipulated than machine-made pasta, mm. in my opinion. So um, also the, the types of wheat the amount of wheat germ that's in it, the nutritional value, it all has to do uh, with those elements within the, in the flour. And to be honest, like I've developed a, uh, a gluten intolerance because I've been breathing raw flour for the past, you know, 12 years. Oh, so really? As soon as I step in, step foot in the lab and I start rolling as folia, my stomach just start, it's acid straight up. That's crazy. Just I've been from the breathing powder. Raw, yeah. Wow. Because it's like talcum, you know, double zero mm -hmm. flour is extremely fine. So we have to throw it in order to, you know, 
put some on the table to roll it out. So you breathe it in all day long. That's and we've what you've got developed. extractors, we've got, you know, humidity control and air conditioning and all that, but still. But so you've developed an intolerance because yeah, of it's that? Called, it's called white lung or baker's lung. Baker's lung. Yeah. So do you wear a mask? Uh, I do not. Why don't you wear a mask? Um, I don't know. Suck it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like when the, I don't know. I, I, you know. It seems like that would be a good thing to do. Sure. But you don't want that baker's lung. I'm, right? I don't, I, I don't like masks. Oh, okay. This whole You'd experience is, this whole experience is very has been very enlightening mm. wearing a mask. Right. Yeah, it's you gross. Know, I have another friend who also has a, a Kozuku Kawamura who is uh instrumental in my kind of understanding of uh of modern pasta. I met him in Bologna, he's a Japanese guy who has a, a lab in Tokyo called uh Base and he has the same thing. He wears a mask all the time because he's just breathing in raw flour all day. I never would have thought of that, but it makes total sense. I never thought oh, oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean fucking flour. It's like a guy works at a, a paint shop. Like you're gonna get sick. You gotta get one of the painter things. <laughs> the big <laughs> tubes. That'd be so weird. People be like, I'm not eating that fucking pasta. I don't know. For me, it's part, of, it's part of the experience. It's crazy. What's now. in there? It's preservatives, oh, man. Do. Well, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. We Whether will. it's the white lung, whatever you got to <laughs> clean that shit whatever out. Whatever it takes. I don't know what you can do to get Can't that stop, won't stop. Baker's flour lung, out of you. Just keep going. Yeah, it's just the pasta is insane. It's so good. It's And it's such a – when you have really good pasta and then you have pasta that maybe you enjoyed before, you had the really good pasta, it's like mm. – it's really, no, it, it's like having water in your ear. Like it you fucks think people up. Yeah, it fucks people up. It does. I'm sure. <laughs> I've, like, I cannot tell you how many people DM me or come to me at the restaurant and they say, you've completely fucking ruined me. Thank yeah. you so much. Now I can't eat pasta anywhere else. And I don't eat pasta in North America whatsoever. I don't eat fresh pasta in North America. I only eat pasta in Italy. I eat dried pasta in America, but I don't eat fresh pasta. In, in Why America. not? Mm. Most people don't know what they're doing. But there's got to be some people other than you no, guys. No, certainly. Absolutely. Like, what are good spots? Like, if I you're think Missy Robbins is, is exceptional. Where's I that? Think, uh, New it's York in New City. York. Oh, Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. oh okay. Damn, Missy's you got to go great. all the way to Brooklyn? <laughs> um, you know, Rob Gentile in Toronto is great. So um, there's a very small amount of people that are doing it right. I mean, right. There's, there's a handful of people who make pasta by hand, period. And mm. there even fewer people who know how to make pasta with the mozzarella, which is the long rolling pin. Mm. Even fewer. And when I started, I started doing this 11 years ago. There was nobody. There was nobody. I checked. You know, I moved to Bologna in 2007, tail end of 2007, and started this journey with uh, my maestra, Alessandra Spizni, of La Vecchia Scuola Bolognese. And she kind of opened up the door for me to start seeking out other pasta makers throughout Italy. When I came back in 08, I ran a restaurant called Rustic Canyon for about four years. And, you know, not a lot of people were serving the style of pasta that I wanted to serve. So I started giving it away like a gateway drug. I would just like <laughs> send it to tables for free. And they were like, what the fuck? And it just started gaining momentum and gaining momentum. Wow. So – so when you moved to Italy to, to learn how to do it, like what, what is the apprenticeship like in, you know, learning how to make pasta? I mean, it's an apprenticeship. You have to put yourself in the, in the student's chair and, and be a sponge. I didn't speak any, not a lick of Italian, um, but the Italians are very expressive. So you're able to communicate through just being Italian, I guess. And um, I spent three months, you know, six days a week. 10 hours a day just making pasta. Period. Wow. Period. See, this is what's fascinating to me. Things you just you, know, you just take for granted. Oh, here is a plate of pasta. Like, but what what is involved in learning how to make it that good? It's not just ingredients. When people sit down at a at a restaurant, people aren't just paying for for the experience of sitting there and the cost of food. They're they're paying for the experience of the people that are making the food. Mm. That's a big part of it. That's the way that I look at it. And 11 years of making pasta by hand, there's a lot of depth that some of the younger guys just aren't willing to pay the time cost. Mm. And a lot of the younger cooks out there, they bounce around from job to job, six months here, three months here, and they think that they've mastered it. But there's just no depth. There's no depth. 
you know, you have to also consider how labor intensive it is to, you know, hand roll out the pasta. And, you know, what Evan was saying before, like each one rolled by hand, you know, when you, when you eat a bowl of pasta, you're not thinking that each one was like pressed out by hand. So it's like extremely labor intensive. And a lot of people, when we were opening, um, Evan did have his own restaurant, Bucato, before, which was also um, a, basically focused around pasta as well. That's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> But when we were going to open up this restaurant and we put in the middle of the restaurant the temperature-controlled pasta lab, which is taking up tables. So if you're a business person, a restaurateur, you say, how many tables could fit in there? How much is each table worth to your, your bottom line? You're using up that space wow. to yeah, put in – you're using that space to put in a pasta lab. Are you crazy? Um, also, you know, when you're thinking about – you know, training the people and how labor intensive it is. People were saying, like, we're, we're crazy doing doing this again. Yeah, they didn't think we could make money. Yeah. Well, it is a lot of space. That it's pasta lab space. is a big space. But it's so cool to be sitting right there. It's a showstopper. Yeah, it really, it's, it's something special. 